All right, so some people have asked me to show how I animate my characters, um, or basically they've asked for a tutorial on how to do sprite animations. And it's, it's something I'm still working out. Um, I can get nice results, but I'm not very efficient at it. So this is probably going to be a lot longer and a lot more convoluted than my usual tutorials. But I figure, well, it's, it's better than nothing for now, and I guess at some point I'm going to make a, nice, a nicer version of this. So... I'll show you the process. Okay, so the simple, the the basic process, let me first get my tools down here. Okay, so first thing is resolution. Make sure that the pixels, that the canvas is at the resolution that is, you know, suited to your project. Uh, I like, one of the things about doing pixel animation is that you're going to want to be able to see chunky pixels. I'm using a program called TVP Animation Pro, but whatever I'm teaching you will work in whatever program it is that you're using like I don't know graphic scale or there's a sprite as it's spelled a-s-e-p-r-i-t-e -E. I'll, I'll throw links in the description for these programs uh, hexels can also do this animation and then the other thing is that if you're using a program which has you know like a krita I think krita has has an animation capability you're going to want to turn off any anti-aliasing on your tools and also turn off any pressure it means that as soon as you draw a brush stroke it should be a hundred percent opacity if you're seeing um, if you're seeing something like say this, right, or you're seeing stuff like this, eh, you know, you your tools really you gotta you gotta set them up so that they will do 100% pixels. So anyway, that's that's one thing. And another, so some of the tools I use are things like shape cuts, and I also use um, a very very simple bland bland <laughs> type of <laughs> brush. That's about it. Um, you're going to need just those, those those two simple things. Okay, so now, uh, first things first is you're going to want to know the scale of your character. So you'll probably need um, one frame of your character fully done. So actually, you know what? Let's let's use the witch character which I have here. So I'm just going to grab... Um, yeah, let's just grab this. So I'm going to use my uh, selection brush or selection tool. Let's just copy that to a brush. So I can just stamp that down now and uh, go back here. Okay, so I have this, and then I'm going to just get rid of the, um, the background. And I'm just going to put that, put her over, over to the side. And now she's on a separate layer, so maybe you'll see on my layer setup. There she is. So there's my reference. Uh, there she is on the layer. I think what I'll also do is... I'm going to try and animate her jumping. So the first step is so a lot of a lot of animation is actually preparation. People think it's like, oh, draw this drawing, draw that drawing, draw that drawing, draw that drawing. It's like, yeah, but you'll find that things go a lot faster if you prepare carefully. That's why. All right. So anyway, I won't I won't belabor the point. So preparation. So if I'm going to have her, let's say I'm going to have her jump um, on a jump from one lower level to a higher level and I want to think okay what would her jump height be and let's make it a, a small like a really short jump so something that's maybe jumping from, from that level to this level and let's just slide everything down a bit and the reason I'm doing that is um, we only have so much room for her, her and her, her hat <laughs> okay so um, yeah, let's uh, let's erase this bit here. Okay, so the first thing is you want to have a reference layer that is set up, and uh, let's let's bring down the opacity of that reference layer. And then the next step. So in this case, it's set up so that um, I have my layer set on a hold layer. So that way, if I drag it across, you'll see that you know no matter which layer, no matter which frame I'm on, it will just keep that consistent. Okay, so the so for me. Um, the most important thing is figuring out the actual action, not the aesthetics, right? So there's going to be there's going to be the illustrator part of you that's going to want to draw a pretty picture, and you have to just tell that illustrator side of you to just hold his horse, hold, hold your horses. We got to make the motion look good first, first and foremost. So let me just put that layer window away, and let's begin. Okay, so. 
um, simple brush tool. Whoops, no, not not that simple brush tool. Uh, that's that's my cut and paste brush. Uh, here's my simple brush tool. Okay, so I'm going to work in just black, and so maybe this is my first frame. People are going to talk about things like keyframes. Okay, you know what? Um, she's just there for scale, and I'm not going to worry about the hat. I'm not going to worry about the, the the dress she's wearing or any of that. It's just basic figure drawing. Um, the first thing that actually comes to mind here would be, um, you know, let's let's lock down where her feet, where one of her feet is going to be, and maybe I'm going to have her. Let's let's get her in a crouch position. So I'm going to get her in the full crouch. And I, I kind of want to have her where her, her hands are kind of kept close. So the thing is, she doesn't do like a whole lot of violent motions with her hands. So, and let's see. And she's a really thick character. So the thing is that her shoes, or rather her toe would be here, her heel would be here, her uh, knee would be here. And this is all just, you know, viewed from the side view. And the thing is that when you look at your character, like your um, the poses need to be poses that that character can you know, that look good for that character. So the thing is that, you know, she don't, she wouldn't, she'd actually be kind of, she wouldn't stoop very much. So I'm, again, this is, like I say, it's very trial and error, and I just need to concentrate for a bit. So I do want to have her balance over her toes. And... It's going to be kind of messy, right? It's, so actually, I'm going to keep her arms here. Yeah, so her arms don't move out very much, and her head. So maybe that. Let's throw in another frame, and let's just put this into light light box mode. So, you know what? It's too soon to even do the pose. I think, if anything, I just want to work out. Um, just motion. So I'm just going to figure out that I'm going to have her maybe take up this much space. She's going to take up this much space and she's going to jump to about here. And then she's going to land. So boom. And then so all of this is just whoops. I need to throw in another frame and then do the landing. So up there. So one, two, three. Then I'll go in between this frame and this frame, and I'll work out. I want her to squish down, and there. So then on this frame, we do a squish down. So that's the other thing is that if you can't really envision the pose, right? You can see one, two. Oh, so this is the squish down, jump up, land. Right, this is okay. So now what I'm doing is I'm drawing in in between. So I just want to take figure out how much space she takes up, and I'm using that to figure out the pose. Just because, like, I, I was just having a really tough time for it. So, whoops, I don't want that. I want that to be maybe more um, since it's for you know like a sprite for like a video game. Right, so this is getting okay. So what I'm working towards is something which I can roto. <laughs> like rotoscope is typically used for um, taking an animation, oh, sorry, taking footage, like video footage, and then tracing over top of it. In this case, I'm generating my own video footage to, like you would take smooth animation and then you would draw over top of it, you'd trace it. So what I'm doing is I'm creating the motion right now and let's play it back. That's that jumps a little too fast, right? Even at 15 frames a second, that's that's too fast. So I, it means that I need more in-betweens. So maybe what I'll do is I'll hold this frame for two frames. So what I'm doing in, in TV paint is I'm stretching this one frame. So This is just working out timing. So now we can see that there's a bit of a, there's a slight delay before she springs out. And then, and then maybe on this frame, I'm going to make it 
hold for one frame just like before. And maybe on the last frame, I'll hold that for a, an extra frame. Okay. Let's see. There. So this is just working out timing, right? So you can take a limited number of frames rather than just going in there and adding frame, adding frame, adding frame, adding frame. Um, what I do is I work in a sort of straight ahead manner, but when I do the straight ahead, I'm only animating a little blob that's hopping around. And so the nice thing about straight ahead is that it keeps you in the sense of motion, right? Whereas if you're drawing keyframe, 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 it kind of drags you out of that sense. And the other thing is that if you do keyframe, 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 you tend to want to illustrate. So what I do is I do straight ahead, but with a really, really simple blob placeholder like this. And all I care about in this case is just motion. Motion and volume, right? Just figuring out how much space she's going to take up. And then once I have those few critical keyframes, the critical keyframes are the necessary keyframes to make it so that her motion path looks the way I want it to, right? Then I work on timing. So the exa an example of a ki critical keyframe is, let's throw in another layer. All right. So here's the problem is that if I draw something like this, right? This is her start. Here's her end path. Mentally, what happens is your brain just thinks, well, or my brain just, if I, don't, if I only have two keyframes, it just thinks doo -doo 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 -doo. that that's how she's going to move, right? Because there's no information in between. If I just have a start and an end, that's how my brain thinks. So what I have to do instead is I need to, what we want is a pose that's more, you know, more like this, right? More, it has to follow a, a parabolic trajectory. So that's why this one's needed, but still your brain goes doo -doo 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 and, and that's, that's what, right? So we're missing critical keyframes. And the other thing is that, okay, I can throw in another one here and another one here. And now we have the motion, but the thing is that it just looks like she's going and there's no, there's no squash or stretch in between, right? So that's why you need additional critical keyframes. You need all the critical keyframes until you can envision the timing as well as the motion path that she goes through, as well as the, the, the changes in volume and mass, not just position, but the volume and the, the mass must stay consistent. The volume must stay consistent, but the, the proportioning, the squash and the stretch, the, the distortion of volume is what you need to, to be able to, to get across in your critical frames. So some of these, I guess you can call these in-betweens, you know, like maybe you can call them in-betweens, but like, it, like, don't just draw and say, this is going to be an in-between. This is going to be a keyframe. This is, it's like, just play the damn thing back, like flip through the thing and see how good the motion is. All right. All that book smart crap that they, that they, that they you know, teach you through books and stuff. It's like, you don't know shit until you've actually done it yourself until you're actually doing it. Right. And, and even when you're doing it, I don't think to myself all the things that they tell you in the books, because I'm just focusing on motion, motion and physics, trying to get a good physical motion simulation. So this is the first part. This is, is this, this is, I guess I would call this the breakdown. And you know what? This is probably a good place to stop the video and just we'll start another one. We'll go to the next step. But the first step is getting the breakdown.